Hi, I'm Cal Ripken. Welcome to Truck Track. Chevy Express, full-size hauling, full-size towing, and full-size passenger capacity. One thing's for sure, this is no minivan. In this month's main story, we'll take a look at the two popular entries in the full-size van market, Chevy Express and Ford Club Wagon. We'll see how the design of Express yields some solid advantages over the Ford. In our technical review, we'll get under the skin of Chevy Express to learn the advantages of its suspension. Pete Toko talks with a Chevrolet suspension expert in driving the Express way. This month's Focus on TCE shines a light on another Express advantage with Chevy's bright idea. And in Behind the Bowtie, we'll get some insight into the Chevy family of passenger vans from a van brand team marketing expert. Event coverage this month travels to South Miami Beach to get a look at a new breed of compact pickup buyers as we preview the S10 sponsored X Games Experience Tour. It's coming up in the Extreme Files. We'll also have breaking news and an exclusive interview with baseball's Iron Man, Cal Ripken Jr., who tells how he prepares to face his competition every day. It's all coming your way in this edition of Truck Track. Hi, I'm Callie Northhagen. And I'm Lowell Perry. Welcome to Truck Track. When you think of full-size vans, you may think of church buses or airport shuttles. Well, there's a reason such organizations use them. These vans offer passenger carrying capacity beyond most vehicles this side of a school bus. But they're also a great choice for large families or retirees who do a lot of traveling. Chevy Express provides a choice of models and passenger capacities to meet any of these buyers' needs. There's room for up to 15 people in the extended wheelbase models, and when you consider its available cargo space and towing power, Express is a giant among passenger vans. With its cargo counterpart Chevy Van plus Venture and Astro, it's a key part of the most comprehensive van lineup in the industry. Express models come in two different wheelbases, 135-inch regular and 155-inch extended, and three GVWR ranges, 1500, 2500, and 3500. All can be equipped with either the base or up-level LS trim. Express models incorporate a tough full perimeter frame that provides structural support for both the body and payload. This frame was an important new feature when Express was redesigned for the 1996 model year. Previous Chevy van and sport van models featured unibody construction, much like the current Dodge Ram wagon competitor. Chevy Express models provide a long list of standard features, including four-wheel anti-lock brakes, dual airbags, and front air conditioning. There's also speed-sensitive electronic variable orifice power steering, or EVO, which adds to driver control by adjusting the steering assist based on the vehicle's speed. Seating for 8 is standard on 1500 series models. Seating for 12 is standard on 2500 and 3500 models. And with many options like available 15-passenger seating, rear heating and air conditioning, and a wide front-to-rear pass-through area, Express makes a perfect vehicle for many people moving applications. Now, how does all this stack up to the Ford Club Wagon? Club Wagon XL also provides standard four-wheel ABS and dual airbags, but air conditioning costs $975, and Club Wagon doesn't include a speed-sensitive steering system. Another feature that Club Wagon doesn't offer is a short long arm, or SLA, front suspension design, like that found on Chevy Express. To find out more about this advantage, let's join Pete Toko. Why, thanks, Callie. Well, right now I'm taking a little test drive with Chevy Express suspension engineer Chris Byther to find out more about how the front suspension design on Express benefits buyers. Hi, Chris. Hi, Pete. Thanks for joining us. Welcome aboard. Thank you. So let me ask you, what is the front suspension design on Chevy Express? Well, all Chevy Express vans feature an independent front suspension 
has a long lower control arm and a short upper control arm. Also a key feature is the computer selected front springs for, for a smooth ride, tubular front sway bar for roll control, mm -hmm. and a parallel gram type steering linkage geometry. This gives precise steering control while also providing a tight turning diameter. Sure. Well, then, in your opinion, what would be the major difference or benefit of that design versus, say, uh, the front suspension design on Ford's Club Wagon? Well, by using the long lower control arm and the short upper control arm, that, that allows us to drop the engine lower in the chassis and further forward. This gives a lower center of gravity height for improved stability and also provides more, more leg room for the front seat occupants. You know, Chris, uh, I remember that Ford used to advertise their twin I-beam suspension as a good thing on the previous generation F-Series pickups. And yet, they've replaced it with a design that's kind of like this one on Chevy Express. Now, does that tell us anything? Well, it's obviously they've determined that they need to make some changes in their vehicles to be competitive with Chevrolet for a smooth ride and, and superior handling. You took the words right out of my mouth. I couldn't have said it any better. Thanks so much for your time, Chris. Really appreciate it. You're welcome, Pete. Callie, back to you for a little bit more on Chevy Express and the Club Wagon engines. Thanks, Pete. The standard engines are fairly comparable in horsepower and torque output for both Club Wagon and Express. But when it comes to the big boys, the optional Chevy Vortex 7400 V8 SFI and Ford 6.8 liter V10, the Chevy Express power plant pumps out 25 more horsepower than the V10. And when we look at maximum trailer towing, the Vortex 7400 V8 and the Ford V10 both can tow up to 10,000 pounds. With these performance figures, why would Ford go to a V10? Well, with their modular engine design, the easiest way to get a larger displacement engine was to add two more cylinders to their modular V8. The Vortex 7400 V8 was originally designed as a large displacement engine. Chevy Express has the advantage of two wheelbase lengths. Ford offers regular and extended length models, but both ride on the same 138-inch wheelbase. Express provides different wheelbases, including one that's 17 inches longer than Ford. Generally, a longer wheelbase contributes to a smoother ride, better load weight distribution, and more stable handling, especially when fully loaded. And since club wagon extended models are built on a shorter wheelbase, the back end can appear added on. The Chevy extended models have far less overhang behind the rear wheels. What's more, Ford doesn't offer an extended length model comparable to the Chevy Express 2500 extended. If you want an extended model for more room, but don't need the higher GVWR of a Ford Club Superwagon XL, you're out of luck with the choices Ford offers. Well, we've seen how Chevy Express offers more maximum horsepower, more wheelbase choices, and better model availability than the club wagon. Let's see what Pete can add. Well, thanks, Lowell. You know, these vans are great for picking up people and their luggage. So we came to the Oakland Pontiac Airport to look at the two mainstays of the full-size passenger van market, Chevy Express and Ford Club Wagon. But since Chevy Express is fairly new on the market, let's take a look at some of its comfort and convenience features before we go head to head with the Ford. Now, a useful option on LS is the available remote keyless entry system, which locks and unlocks the doors from up to 30 feet away. By pressing the unlock button once, the driver door unlocks. Pressing it twice unlocks all the doors. On the inside, the thoughtfully laid out interior reflects sound ergonomic design principles. Controls are within easy reach and can even be operated while wearing gloves. The front console cup holders are close to both front occupants and can easily be located without taking your eyes off the road. The full set of gauges in the instrument panel are easy to see too. And with engine oil pressure, engine temperature and voltmeter readouts, they keep the driver well informed of operating conditions. Driver comfort is important, so the shoulder belt anchor is adjustable to aid in a proper safe positioning across the chest. On LS models, tilt wheel adjustable steering column and electronic speed control are standard, so driver can really get comfortable. And buyers who live in frosty climates will like the fold-away power exterior mirrors that feature defoggers. These mirrors are optional on both Chevy Express models. Now, 
Let's see how Chevy Express stacks up against Ford's Club Wagon. And a great place to start is under the hood. Now whether the vehicle is used for shuttle services or family transportation, owners appreciate a van that can stay on the job without the need for a lot of routine maintenance. And there, Chevy Express offers some thoughtful features Club Wagon can't match. Chevy uses extended life coolant that lasts up to five years or 150,000 miles, spark plugs that can go up to 100,000 miles, a stainless steel exhaust, and transmission fluid that will never need to be changed under normal driving conditions. On the normal service schedule, Ford recommends coolant changes every 30,000 miles after the first 50,000, and transmission fluid changes every 30,000 miles. After 150,000 miles, that could be as much as $550 on the Ford. Now that really adds up, especially if you've got a fleet of these babies. Now, Callie and Lowell mentioned the standard speed sensitive EVO steering on Chevy Express. Well, with vehicles this big, you need a lot of power steering boost when parking. But too much boost on the highway leads to vague steering feel. The system on Chevy Express adjusts the amount of boost based on vehicle speed. Club Wagon doesn't offer a similar system, so the amount of power steering boost is sort of a compromise. With all the passengers these vehicles carry, easy entry and exit is important. Specifically, you want a low step in height for convenience. Chevy's front step in height is lower than Ford on all models to ease entry. Now when you look at the Club Wagon, you'll see there is also a step in height advantage on the side. Now for young children or the elderly, the extra amount of step up on the Ford can mean a lot. Ford's higher step in height and its door opening that's about three and a half inches shorter can mean that you're more likely to bang your head when climbing in. Now another item on Chevy Express that can help prevent bruises is the light that illuminates the step. It's standard on LS trim models and optional on base. But Ford Club Wagon doesn't offer a light here. On Chevy Express, it's not only standard on all LS models, but there are similar lights at both front door steps as well. Now, Club Wagon also does not have an important safety feature, child security door locks. Express has them on the side and rear doors. And here's another thoughtful touch on Express. When equipped with power locks, a switch at the rear door is included. This allows the entire vehicle to be unlocked from the rear area. Now another feature I like is the roof end cap above the rear doors. If you're carrying something like a, a ladder on the roof, getting it down might scratch the paint on the rear edge of Club Wagon's roof. The cap on Chevy Express eliminates this worry. And while these full-size vans are primarily used as passenger vehicles, their cargo hauling ability is also important. Chevy Express not only has more cargo capacity than Club Wagon in either regular or extended models, but has features that make that advantage more usable. Now, for example, with large cargo, taking the seats out is a must. Now, this is much easier on Chevy Express because the seats feature rollers for easier positioning when out of the van. Ford seats, however, don't feature rollers. And when Club Wagon seats are removed, the seat anchors stick up. Now, you wouldn't want to lay drywall or an antique table on those. Chevy Express, on the other hand, provides flat, uninterrupted load floor. But these vans aren't all about work. You know, many buyers use them for long family trips, where comfort is very important. Let's see how comfy the Ford is. In the Ford, the engine cover really intrudes on foot space. Legroom numbers wouldn't take this into account, but the difference is noticeable. The Chevy is much better. Less intrusion here. In fact, it's about 40% wider than Ford. And look at these door pockets. You could fit a lot of maps and guidebooks in here. Can't say the same for Club Wagon. Their door pockets are kind of like those little elastic pockets in a cheap set of luggage. Now, I will admit one thing about the Club Wagon. It does have a large center storage compartment. But even with all that room, though, there are no provisions for storing CDs or cassettes. Chevy Express respects the needs of music lovers with this neat CD organizer. And Express offers plenty of room to get through the rear seating area to keep those kids in line on the way to Grandma's house. Now, Chevrolet has always stood for value, from the smallest vehicle to the largest. 
Value is giving your buyer a van full of unexpected features and advantages for a reasonable price. Well, that wraps up the comparison. Well, there are a few more benefits to pass on, and it's this month's Toco's tip, a feature I call greasy hinge stuff. Now at first glance, you may think that the rear doors on Chevy Express open wider than those of Club Wagon. Well, there is one way to open the Ford's doors wider. You have to remove this door stop pin, a pain in itself because it's covered in grease. None of this is necessary on Chevy Express because the doors open 165 degrees without removing anything, something your customers will really appreciate. And Chevy Express also has a wider rear opening to make loading cargo that much easier. See, but that's not all. Even when both Express and Club Wagon have their rear doors open 90 degrees, Club Wagon's doors intrude into the loading area. This results in a rear door opening that's a foot smaller in width than Express, taking away important shoulder room when loading or unloading cargo in tight spaces where the doors can't be open all the way. The rear doors on Express have another advantage. When fully opened, the doors are protected because the bumper will contact first. This enables you to back up to a loading dock in your local home improvement center without hitting the doors. On Club Wagon, however, the doors will hit the loading dock first, meaning you better have an extra person to guide you in. And when fully opened, the Express rear doors don't block the high-mounted tail lights, as in the case on Club Wagon with its lower-mounted lights. It's important if you have a roadside emergency and you have to have your hazards on. Well, that's Toko's tip for this month. Gee, I sure hope I don't get all this Ford grease on my nice Chevy truck jacket. Back to you, Lowell and Callie. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Stay clean. A feature we call Chevy's Bright Idea is our focus on TCE for this month. What do you do when you need a light for a nighttime emergency? Hope your flashlight has fresh batteries? Well, Chevy Express LS has a better way. It's a standard underhood work light on a retractable reel. And yes, it can even extend out all the way to the rear tires. Even for use under hood, you can illuminate precisely what you need to see. With a convenient magnet, the light allows you hands-free operation. Try doing that with a flashlight. This useful feature is also available on the base Chevy Express model in the optional auxiliary lighting package. However, it's not available on any club wagon model. That could leave Ford customers in the dark. And of course, Chevy Express isn't the only van offered by Chevrolet. To find out more on how it fits into the Chevy family of vans and other important information about Express, let's rejoin Pete for our Behind the Bowtie segment. Hey, thanks a lot, Lowell. Well, I'm outside today at the General Motors Technical Center with Linda Pessinen, who is a brand marketing expert for Chevy Express. Hi, Linda. Hi, Pete. How are you? Good. Thanks for being a part of the show. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Now, Linda, first of all, I have to ask you, how does Chevy Express fit into the Chevy family of vans? Well, Pete, I'm glad that you asked that. One of the things that we try to concentrate a lot on is how do you market your product not only under the Chevy truck umbrella, but when you've got three unique vans filling a marketplace need, how do you best position each one? Sure. And if I could mention Astro briefly is a step up in size and utility for the Venture, and then the Chevy van and Chevy Express as well are a step up in size and utility for the Chevy Astro van, offering the utmost in flexibility and versatility from five to 15 passengers and hauling and towing and so on and so forth. So it fills a great uh, niche product for the full-size van from commercial to personal use as well. Now, what would you say is Chevy's position in the full-size van market in relation to the competition then? Well, in particular on the passenger van uh, portion of the full-size van market, the van market in general is roughly 370,000 units per year wow. uh, registrations. That, that was the total number for the 96 model year. And in particular, of those registrations, 16% were passenger vans. And in that passenger van market, Ford has held a dominant position in excess of 50% of that market for the last several years, and Chevrolet has come in just around the 10% level. However, uh, going forward with the launch of the all-new redesigned full-size van and additional opportunity in terms of availability presents a great opportunity to make significant inroads in this particular market relative to Ford and Dodge. Now, you know, Lynn, it occurred to me when I was driving over here today that 
Express has the newest design on the market, right? Right. So let me ask you, does Ford or Dodge have any plans to similarly revamp their full-size vans? Well, Ford made some changes during the 97 model year. In particular, they made a lot of engine enhancements with their Triton series of engines. But when you match up our Vortex series of gas engines with their new enhancements, ours still meet or beat them in terms of overall horsepower. So we still have a major advantage there. With respect to Dodge, they made some changes with regard to the instrument panel as well to accommodate dual airbags for this coming model year. Um, but again, no major changes planned, at least as far as we can see, with respect to the full-size van competition. Now, who would you say are the typical buyers and how are the vans used? Well, of that 16% of the van market, or roughly 60,000 units per year, roughly 60% of that volume is fleet. You have daily rental and you have government and so on and so forth. So there is an opportunity for major fleet sales, but also in retail, especially when you look at people getting used to driving larger vehicles, larger utilities, suburban type sized mm -hmm. vehicles. They're a lot more comfortable with that than they were just a few short years ago. And in addition, in spite of the fact that the vehicle is longer than the previous model that it replaced over the last 25 years, it still turns tighter on a tighter uh, turning diameter than the model that it replaced. Really? So in particular, it's, it's going to offer great advantage in, in terms of the overall uh, market opportunities with respect to fleet and retail uh, customers both. Well, it sounds like Chevy Express is definitely keeping you busy. Keeps us real busy <laughs> and we love working with the van. It's a great product, has been very well received in the market thus far. We're really excited about it. Well, thanks so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Pete. Hey, from the GM Tech Center, that's all for now. Back to you, Lowell and Kelly. Thanks again, Pete. Our event coverage this month features a way for Chevy dealers to attract S10 prospects through an Extreme Games traveling tour. Let's take a look at the Extreme Files. The 1997 X Games are just around the corner. From June 21st to June 28th in San Diego, the X Games will feature extreme sports like skateboarding, wakeboarding, inline skating, and street luging. What does this event have to do with Chevy? Well, Chevy's S10 pickup will be an official sponsor of the event because the rugged individuals who buy those models love these games. Leading up to the event will be the X Games Experience, a traveling show with live extreme sport demonstrations and activities for the attendees. We caught up with one of these events in South Miami Beach. We have 12 sponsors, 6 gold, 6 associate, and the sponsors come in at different levels and they get to plan what their activities include at the experience tour. That's the best thing about the tour is that the sponsors get to pick what they do. For example, Chevy's chosen to bring a truck on site so that people can see one of their vehicles, come up and talk to someone from the dealership and ask questions, and hopefully, I'm assuming, to buy a truck in the long run. Research tells us that our buyer and intender in the compact pickup segment is what we define as a rugged individual. Usually they're young males between 20 and 30 years old who are seeking to express themselves by virtue of their athleticism. So the X Games makes a perfect place for us to exhibit our vehicle. Right now, what I would encourage a dealer that knows that an X Games tour is coming to their particular locality, to get in touch with the regional truck manager for purposes of making sure that they are tied in properly with the promotion. Uh, they can either display vehicles if it's in their area of sales responsibility at the games itself, or more importantly, they should make sure that their showroom display and dealership lot display is S10s up front we encourage dealers to promote the third door extended cab, either two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, and certainly a four-wheel drive is a perfect match for the demographics that we're trying to reach. And that brings us to breaking news. 1997 first quarter sales figures are in, and the Chevy news is good. Cavalier posted sales of 91,189 units, making it the second best-selling car in America, behind the Toyota Camry, but ahead of Ford Taurus and Honda Accord. And when you look exclusively at the small car market, Cavalier is the clear leader. Equally impressive is that 75% of Cavalier sales are to retail customers, not to fleets. The good news also extends to the entire corporation. General Motors reported that the first quarter of 1997 was the best performance in more than a decade. Commenting on the improvement, GM Chairman, CEO and President Jack Smith said, Our focus on building quality products, 
competing globally, and hitting our financial targets will sustain the success of this company far into the future. The Truck Track team thanks you all for your contributions to get this great performance. In other news, GM was honored with the Clean Air Award by the Coalition for Clean Air in Los Angeles, California recently. GM has done much to improve air quality in Southern California, but the prime motivator behind this award was GM's introduction of the EV1 electric car, which is being leased through Saturn dealers in the Southwest. And finally, we had the opportunity to visit with future Baseball Hall of Famer Cal Ripken Jr. Cal is baseball's Iron Man and one of our Chevy truck partners, matching his image of dependability to Chevy's advertising and marketing efforts. Yet, like you, he has to outmaneuver his competition every day to win. We asked him to share his thoughts about the importance of knowing the competition. Preparation is probably the most important thing um, about my job or any other job. Um, I can go out there and rely on my talent, my skill, and get the job done, but it seems like I can get the job done a whole lot more completely if I know about all the variables. And the variables uh, in my sport would be uh, the other team, uh, who you're playing, who's hot, who's not, uh, what are their tendencies, uh, what's the manager do in the other, uh, uh, in the other dugout, what's it, what does he like to do in certain situations. I like to prepare, I like to collect all kinds of information, uh, I like to get them from all different directions. And then I try to sit down and analyze that information. And if you put everything together and you think about it, you formulate a certain strategy, uh, I think you're going to have success. Um, to me, going out there without preparation, without information, um, you almost go out there naked. And, uh, and the success of what you do depends upon you know, your talent that particular day. I don't like to rely on my talent for that particular day. I want to rely on my knowledge, um, my abilities uh, uh, beyond you know, my particular talent. Now throwing that talent in there, uh, you're going to have something pretty good. Practice is important. Cal believes repeating fundamentals has been vital to his success. There is an old saying that uh, practice does make perfect. Uh, my dad modified that a little bit, uh, and his saying would be something like this, perfect practice makes perfect. And I think what he means by that is, uh, practice is important, but it's also important to practice it the right way. You learn the best by practicing the right way. If you go, if you go through the motions, you don't get the full benefit about, about what you're doing. So uh, practice is important, but it's also important to practice it the right way. In the end, Cal believes that the major key to success is attitude, no matter what team you're playing for. Sometimes that's one of the hardest things uh, to do is to come out and, uh, and, and do your job day in and day out, especially when you play baseball. You play it every single day. Uh, some days it's easy to have your focus, it's easy to have your concentration. On other days it's, it's very difficult. Uh, I think the thing that I do is, first of all, you got to recognize when it is that you don't have your focus and your concentration. And if you recognize that, then you can develop certain uh, techniques. Maybe you just have a talk with yourself. Maybe you say, come on, let's get it going. Maybe you decide you're going to change your routine just a little bit, uh, uh, change the monotony, um, just change the structure of your day to try to get yourself going. There's certain things you can do. Don't be afraid to try things because motivation is a hard thing. Our thanks to Cal Ripken Jr. for joining us and for sharing his thoughts. Well, that's it for this month. Coming up next month, we'll take a look at the commercial truck market. Until then, goodbye and thanks for watching.